Ladies and gentlemen, please notice that exits are conveniently located at the front and rear of this auditorium. When leaving the theater, we suggest that the exit at the front of the auditorium will allow you easier access to the parking areas. Thank you. I'm going to assume that everyone else can hear me, so I will talk to them, the people out there, the audience, if they can hear me. Hey, everyone. Mike can't hear me, but you can. You see behind me? You see we got our new studios being built. Hopefully it'll look really nice once everything's put up and painted and stuff like that. So I had to watch Roadhouse today because I was not able to watch it uh, earlier uh, or yesterday um, for, oh, because I started watching Heat. So fun fact, uh, Michael Mann, and I, I wish I had the book in front of me because I would start, I would start pimping it, but there's a sequel to, it's a sequel and a prequel to the movie Heat, the 1995 movie Michael Mann directed with Robert De Niro and Al Pacino. And the book starts off right after the events of the movie. So I love that movie. And so I wanted to, so I started reading the book. And so if you remember the movie, remember how it ends, it start. this book starts off where it follows the Val Kilmer character, Chris, and the aftermath of what happened to him. And then what happens is the book jumps back to 1988, which is like seven years prior to the events of this movie. And it talks about Chris's, it follows Chris's life leading up to it. And then I think it jumps ahead because I haven't gotten this far jumps beyond the events to 2000. So I'm really interested in the book and I wanted to watch the movie. So last night I was going to go to bed and, the, and then the gunfight scene came on where they're in downtown LA and they're just going at it with, with assault rifles, which is a great scene. Um, it's probably, I mean, one of the best uh, gunfight scenes in, in cinema, probably definitely in modern day cinema, but in cinema totally. Um, so that's why I had to watch Roadhouse today almost four or five hours before we did this uh, because I chose to watch Heat last night. So are you working now, Mike? I, no one can hear you, man. No one can hear you. Oh, you're muted. I muted myself because I didn't want to have people hear me fussing around. But yes, I am back. I'm good. Excellent. Excellent. So I, I hope I entertain the audience with my story of <laughs> Heat, reading Heat 2. Um, We're yeah. up and running. So I'm gonna, yes, if finally. you're fast forwarding through it, this this means we're you're good to go. This is where you can stop <laughs> and, and start listening. Again. I have like a hair in my glasses. So what's going on? Nothing, you know. I uh, should I, should I redo the opening? Should no, I redo the high as Mike? No, that's okay. all right. <laughs> I've been uh, been feeling pretty down lately. I actually, uh, you know, I let a guy stab me in the gut after collecting a whole bunch of money and then let myself almost get hit by a train, but decided eh, maybe not. And, uh, <laughs> not today headed down to the Florida <laughs> keys. <laughs> yeah. Or the DR as where is they, where they shot it. He, he says, uh, he uh, says, yeah. maybe not. He goes, eh, maybe not. Oh, that's right. Maybe not. Okay. Um, yeah, so if you so yes, we're here to talk about the new Roadhouse, the 2024 version that is on uh, Prime Video, starting Jake Gyllenhaal uh, and and a variety of other people. Yes, Conor McGregor, which we'll get into. <laughs> um, <laughs> we watch. So if you are a Patreon member, you might have seen the lead up episode we watched, which is we we actually watched the older, the original Roadhouse, the 1989 version with Patrick Swayze. A um, lot of there's a lot of. Uh, callbacks to that movie in this, uh, including the plot, uh, so which is fine. Um, but uh, so we kind of watched that, which Butler had never seen before. So if you're interested in that, that is a Patreon exclusive. So you'd have to join our community, which I, I highly recommend you do because we have got a ton of content coming in the next like three or four months. I mean, we were just talking about. It. I think we should. I'm gonna. T I'm gonna say it now, Mike. So okay. like we are going to do a lead up series for the for the apes movies for the. What is it? Planet of the Apes. What? What is it? I don't even know the names of them. The new ones. Oh, I've never. I've, Apes, never, I've never seen them. The Planet right. of the Apes and something else. I should know because I love them. But yeah. So we are doing those three, leading up to a now showing episode of the new one that's coming out in May, and then because I just offhandedly said to Butler, <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I jokingly that oh, because we were talking about the new Aliens trailer that came out, Aliens Romulus, right? Alien right. Romulus, yep. and um. 
and I was just like, eh, well, and then he's like, I love Prometheus. And then we just started talking and then Mike's like, we should do all those. So then that's going to be another series we're doing, which I guess we're doing the AVP ones in there. So got, that'll be if we have to do answer the call for our Ghostbusters lead up, we have to do AVP <laughs> for Lovely. our aliens. So, so we'll be doing that. Uh, uh, those And those are that lead up series is part of the Patreon exclusive. So you have to join the Forgotten Cinema community on patreon.com backslash Forgotten Cinema uh, in order for you to be part of that. But this is what we're gonna. This is what we do. We just talk movies, and it's a free flowing conversation. I highly recommend you 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 join the community because we we love interact with everybody. So it'd be awesome if when we do those, we can actually get feedback, live feedback, and just kind of be able to talk with you guys about movies. So, but we're not here to talk about that. That's what we're doing. We got a lot of stuff coming. That's my pitch. We're here to talk about Roadhouse, the Prime Video Roadhouse, twenty twenty four. Um, I know we usually start off the main show, the Forgotten Cinema show, the podcast where we I'm just always like, Mike, what'd you think? So, I mean, I guess without having any kind of flair for originality, Mike, what'd you think? I am so all over the place with this movie. I mean, it is like I think I enjoyed watching it, but it is an absolute garbage pile, steaming pile of of dog doo doo. But the kind that I used to love in like the uh, early 2000s, if if Roadhouse exemplifies everything that was maybe wrong, but in the cultiest of great ways with 80s action cinema, Roadhouse is kind of everything that was wrong if like an early 2000s kind of movie. Can can you and I, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but can you give me right. a comp to like an early 2000s films that you're kind of thinking about when you're watching this? If it's if you don't, I, I hate putting you on the spot like that, but if you do, it'd be awesome. I mean, like the remake of Point Break, um, okay. probably one oh, of them. Come on, <laughs> um, that's wait a minute, that's like 2015, isn't it? I, regardless, is it? come on, but like, those, like, but I'm not saying they're good. That's why it exemplifies those sure, kind sure, of movies sure. that were just always on, like, or like, let's say the DMX kind of uh, the movie with DMX as like a cop, where he's investigating with like Steven Seagal or something. I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head. Oh. Not belly. That was Seagal so wasn't in that. Um, like those, those kind of movies that are just yeah, like yeah, they're in theaters, but they're just a step beyond like movie like DVD bin, and they're going in the DVD yeah. bin probably in a couple <laughs> of months afterward. Those exit kind of wounds, movies. That's what they, e yes. exit wounds. Exit wounds. Exit wounds. Yeah. Which I used to like when I was watching it when I was, I was like obviously twelve or thirteen. Like obviously, listen, I love. I love me some DMX. Um, I, I can't. What's the name <laughs> of the movie? Because it's my every time we talk about DMX, I always bring it up. And it's a Chris Chris Rock movie. He directed it, um, and I believe it's called Take Five, but I think that's wrong. Uh, Chris, I'm gonna look it up right now because DMX has a movie, has a scene in that movie where he uh, Chris Rock's character is in jail. Uh, top Five, that's what it's called. Top Five, okay. not Take Five. And DMX has a scene with Chris Rock. Chris Rock's in like jail for some reason. Like he just gets picked up or something. And, and DMX is in there. And there's like a, they have a scene, and it's like DMX is awesome in the scene. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So I always recommend Top Five. So that, I got to remember that movie because I always say it wrong. But go ahead. So it, it kind of reminded me of those, but it, there's it's just kind of like Roadhouse. It never gets schlocky enough. And for every time I go, oh yeah, it goes back down to kind of being like, ah oh, no. So, I, I mean, obviously, I'm coming up for, from a place where I just saw Roadhouse, so I don't have any love for Roadhouse that I'm sure a lot of our other viewers are going to, and I know I'm probably going to catch flack with that, but Roadhouse isn't a great movie. Uh, it has some great scenes, but it's not It's, cult it's not classic, as amazing. Butler. It's become a cult classic because everyone's like, ah, oh, because it's like The Room is a cult classic. So bad it's good. No, it's not exactly. like The Room, but I hear what you're it's saying. It's not like The Room, but it's, yeah, it's that kind of a thing. Yeah. So I don't have that kind of nostalgia love for it i appreciated the 80sness of it but i don't have that kind of nostalgia love going into this so i'm sure a lot of people who are going to hate on this movie for maybe reasons that doesn't deserve it are going to hate on it for that like hatred that it's not hitting the right nostalgia beats for them but i the things i don't like it like about it are the style choices where it's just all over the place and I, i'm somebody who really likes doug lyman films usually I do like Jake Gyllenhaal. I know a lot of he's got a lot of haters out there for his early work, um, but yeah, early work I, like what work? Which which ones? Like what work? Like Prince like of Persia. Else? Like when when he started blowing up, but before he went to do stage. Sure. We talk about a bunch on the podcast. We we talk about this. We me and you talk about this all the time, and I have the same conversation with um, my wife sometimes because she doesn't like Ben Affleck. Uh, and first of all, I love Ben Affleck. Ben she Affleck's doesn't right. like Ben Affleck. 
the fact that like because she, she hates Armageddon, and I'm like I'm a, I said uh, the same thing to her. I'll say Prince of Persia. You are I'm sorry, but like you're gonna take that paycheck. You're go- if you were up and oh, coming, absolutely. like Prince of Persia was a big movie. You're gonna say yes to that movie because you're because saying yes to that movie gets you other movies that you might want to do, but but also it it solidifies you. It's a possibility of solidifying you as a star. So you're going to say yes to that movie. You have to, uh, just like Ben Affleck has to say yes to Armageddon and all that stuff. So, and so I I, I understand that you can't really. Uh, the one thing about Jake Gyllenhaal, I think we've talked about on the main show, is that he left. He kind of went and did some Broadway stuff. He did some theater and he came back and he did like Nightcrawler and he came back and he did um, Enemy, which we did, which we did for Why mm-hmm. the Book Wins podcast. Um, so he he came back and did like a lot of these like they, they're not like they weren't indies, but they were like smaller, smaller films, but like films that he wanted to do, chose to do. And so he's done real, and he's awesome in um not Moonlight Mile. That's not that. That is the name of the movie, Moonlight Mile. That's with Dustin Hoffman. He's great in that, and he that was that was a younger one. And then when he and the one that October Sky, he's really good in that. So I don't I don't buy the the Jake Gyllenhaal hate because he's he is a solid actor, and I mean he gets a little crazy here with his uh, lifting routine uh, in this one. But um, you know, but it, but that's fine. But I don't I don't get the hate because I I really do like him. No, oh, me too. Um... <laughs> Ah, uh, look at your mom. Uh, hey, ma. <laughs> he does seem he like a down to earth nice. nice guy. Unlike uh, you, Butler. <laughs> but I think he is a great actor. I, I don't know if my mom's seen Nightcrawler, which isn't a he's great He's not movie. good in that. He's not a nice guy in that. He's not a nice yeah. guy in that. But he's it's he's really good in that, even though I don't really yeah. like the movie that much. Um, we so like Enemy. We both like Enemy. Enemy's very good. Yeah. And he's both a nice guy and a nice, not a nice guy in that. This is um, true. But yeah, so I don't come at it from like a position of hating either of those things or hating Jake Gyllenhaal or, you know, hating that. Oh, it's ruining my nostalgia for Roadhouse. But I just think the movie is all over the place. But I did have fun with it, I guess. I never was like, um, it's yeah. two hours, but I never really felt like it was two hours because there was mm-hmm. always something mm-hmm. new in the movie, which was good. Uh, my biggest thing with the film was uh, I kept third act problems. Like when we got to the third oh, act and it was like, and I was like, what's happening? Like there were, th- there were decisions being made and choices being made and just character decisions. And I was like, I don't, this makes no sense. No sense. And I could say third act problems, but l- honestly, it's probably more second act and third act problems because second act doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't lead to anything where right, you know, yeah. you kind of, you, like when you're watching a movie with the exception of like a mystery or something like a film noir where there's going to be a double cross stuff like that when you when you're watching this type of film you kind of know where it's going you kind of know what's what's happening right and what what we're where we're leading to but this film it's just the, the second act just meanders and it's just like you, you get he gets there he gets to the bar in the first act it, he's there he's going to start fighting and and he's going to start protecting the bar and then Second act rolls around. It's like a m- bunch of montages. It's more fights. It's we got to get him. We got to send more guys after him. We got to do this. And then they introduce um, Knox, which is the Conor McGregor character. And you're like, okay, here's here's his main antagonist. And that kind of fizzles a little bit. They have that one fight, and then he they goes the away. And fight, whole, but, just, the second yeah, fight comes out of nowhere. And Knox is just doing whatever. Like he like the whole the whole thing at the end when he gets when he gets to the boat to get to their boat. And he right. gets to, I don't know why he's going to the house. I don't know why he's in a student driver car drinking coconuts. Cause all I'm thinking is like, he's going to have to pee really quick. Like, cause that's a <laughs> lot of coconuts. It and, is lot of coconuts. and he's just like, where is everybody? And I'm like, uh, and then you, so you, you know that they're on a boat in the middle. I, I, like it's stuff like that. It was just like, okay, now we're just making decisions that make no sense. Um, so you don't have a nostalgia for the first one. I kind of do. It's so bad. It's good. Right. And there's a lot of callbacks to that. And I appreciated the follows, but it pretty much follows the plot of of the original in terms of like how he gets there. Like it, like I'm like even like little scenes. I was surprised that 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 it, that it kind of had like the scene that we talked about in the original one, where he first arrives and then the the waitress shows. This is from the oh, Patrick Swayze. Get some breakfast. Shows up, yep. Get some breakfast. They do that scene here, and I'm like. And then I'm like, is the bartender going to start singing now too? Is she is she going to get behind the screen and start singing? <laughs> like I, I I didn't I didn't understand that. 
um what what else did you did, was there something in there that you appreciated more or you you liked that they kind of looked to the double deuce uh sign in the background that was next to the bookshop did you catch that the double deuce was nice i yeah. mean i like that they actually call it the roadhouse and they kind of make a point of making fun of the fact that it wasn't called a roadhouse in the first movie um right, obviously right. i love i like that they kind of kept the music the same for the most part and obviously there was the cage around the band although it never came down um so I, I, I like that weird, kind of stuff it wasn't a very good cage no, it was it was open on the side, so someone clearly like at the beginning throws a beer bottle at a guy. Yeah, and then Conor McGregor just rips it open. Although Conor McGregor apparently in this film Knox. has the strength of thirty five men. Yeah, knocks and walks like he's got uh, his pants. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's just how I. I so when it's I an exaggerated version of how he walks, but yeah, I I was gonna say, but I will say this that um, his character introduction is a is a good is is how you introduce a character in a movie like the, I think we I don't know if we talked about this but I might have read something or I might have watched something that the the art of introducing your main character or your main antagonist has kind of like gone by the wayside like you like a lot of filmmakers don't know how to introduce a character because they just don't understand it like right. you know like just a good way to intro intro somebody like his introduction is is a really good introduction um it just doesn't he doesn't live up to it uh, in terms of his character not not his acting just his character doesn't really live up to like what we expected you know i almost think that's because he comes in too late which like you said he only has the two fights he kind of the second fight's kind of like let's throw him into the final fight just to have him but i mean if you introduce him earlier in act one because i think he comes in too late in act one or mm -hmm. act two rather i'm sorry you have him come in toward the beginning of act two give him more stuff to do have him in and introduce him in in Italy where he is. That's a good, like you said, it's a good scene. But he needs more interaction with the characters. He needs to be more of a uh, a thorn in uh, Dalton's side, and he really just kind of is. Yeah, and and the whole idea that he is from the father of Billy Magnuson's character, uh, uh, Brant. That he is his dad's in prison, and Brant is taking over what his dad was doing, which is basically just putting up. He wants to put one giant luxury course not course um a resort resort yeah right. uh, the whole island like if you look at the plans the whole island is going to be the resort not just like where the right, roadhouse yeah. is everything so, which is a pretty big resort but okay so that's his he's taking over his dad's plans and but then his dad is like here screwing it up i'm gonna uh, he he sends Knox in because he's got spies everywhere the whole father character subplot is just kind of tossed in there and it only serves the purpose of what happens to Bran at the end of the movie, which makes no sense. And then just the fact that Knox shows up, which honestly makes no sense. So I don't I, that whole thing is just odd. Um, the, but I, I wanted to we, I wanted to talk about um, the uh, Dalton character because there's a big difference with this character than the, the Swayze one. They both have a checkered past. They both have that kind of like they they killed somebody but no, didn't mean to in their past. My problem, or well, not my problem, but you don't set it up. I find it hard to well, that was weird. I find it hard to believe that um, this Dalton character is somebody that could be pushed to the edge of he would just murder people because um, the the Patrick Swayze Dalton character is somebody who has been a cooler. He's been a bouncer. He's somebody that has, we're supposed to know and assume that he's somebody that has had to fight and scratch his entire life to get to where he was. Like he's, he's, we, he's destitute. He's poor. He has one car. He just goes, he just pays cash. He doesn't have any ties to anything. He travels the country, walks the earth kind of thing. Um, you know, that's his character. So the fact that, but he got out of control and he killed somebody and he knows that he can't go to that place. He doesn't want to go to that place. So at the end of the first movie, while it is ridiculous, you know, polar bear fell on me, that ending is ridiculous. It's a, it's more believable than this Dalton character because this Dalton character is a UFC fighter who kills a guy in the ring in the octagon, but it's, you know, clearly just gets out of hand, but, it, but I don't, that doesn't, for me, doesn't translate to somebody his character in this movie who goes i you don't want to get me to a place because then i'm going to do things uh, you know i'm going to kill people and i'm going to do things i don't get that i don't get that from his background as a ufc fighter to what happened to him to this because they don't show anything in between that you know what i mean like they show they show a guy who's clearly now um depressed and somebody who you know 
is just down on his luck, but they don't show that one scene where he goes to fight, which I didn't realize was uh, post Malone. I, uh, in the beginning of the movie, I'm like, oh, you didn't realize it, that <laughs> I, I did. And then I'm like, is that him? Is that him? I kept saying to go, that, that's got to be him, right? And, and so that one scene doesn't do it for me. Like, I need to see something in between, like what happens to him after the UFC fight. Now, granted, I'm asking for a three-hour film, but that's my one kind of comment about the differences between the Dalton characters. I know that's not fair to to do that with a, with a remake like this. It's it's inevitable that you're going to do that. But in, the, in and of itself, in this film, I don't believe that this Dalton character would get to the point where he just starts killing people and breaking people's hyoid bones and, and stuff like that. What do you think about that? Um, I don't know. I guess. <laughs> uh, I guess I believe you. I guess I believe that it's it, it is hard to kind of believe he would get to that point because he does regret what he did. But he does have that moment where he where the doc doc is trying to ask him where he comes from. He comes from Montana. He doesn't want to talk about where he comes from. And what I got was that, like, maybe he's had a worse life than just that one UFC fight. Like maybe UFC is where he went to channel that anger and that that power. Um, but I get that you don't see that. Like you said, you'd want to see more. But at the same time, when he does cross that threshold and he starts killing people, I when he breaks the hyoid bone, I was like, yes, finally, let's go. Because I was like, and I, I am too. I hated about like the last one when you don't get to see him take anybody out. It's just you walk through and all the people are out. Which he kind of he only takes out the one guy, then he's thrown in the truck. But then he takes out like ten other guys later. But I like mm -hmm. that we actually see that because that's a payoff. I've been watching this movie for two hours, waiting for him to beat the crap out of people, and now I actually get to see it. Whereas in Roadhouse, you get one big fight, and then the old man beats the crap out of him. <laughs> I, listen, and I like that scene too uh, when he crack when he breaks his neck um, or breaks the bone. I just I think, you know, what? maybe we need uh, we need that kind of like that Sam Elliott character to come in there and give us backstory on Dolan. To I was like, waiting for he's like, a, he's yeah, a he's Sam not a Elliott prima character. donna UFC yeah. fight because you I'm not saying I'm not saying UFC fighting is, you know, soft. Not at all. I would not do it. And that's great. <laughs> not my thing. I'm not fighting. I'm not saying that. But they are like they are like pop and circumstance a lot of times you know like they talk about like oh he was your friend or that kind of thing you know there is that kind of like it's like a respectful like it's like boxing almost but obviously not but it's right. that kind of like you know camaraderie that's what i was looking for um i think i just we just need some character to come be like well you don't know what he's been through since then and then we kind of and it's going to be an expo dump but we need it i think we need it here to kind of buy the fact that okay he's he's done some serious stuff and they're going to push them to where I want to see that. So yeah. we, you know, cause, cause quite honestly, even though they kind of tell you at the end that it doesn't happen, he murders another guy. <laughs> so he like, he not, <laughs> he murders like Knox like pretty quick, but obviously no, because he walks off. I, it, so I think maybe that's what I, I think. I just need something like that. If it's an expo dump, it's an expo dump, but I just, I need to, I kind of buy into the fact that this Dalton would do these things at the end of the movie. Yeah, I mean, I don't disagree with that. I just enjoy that he does do that. Like, I enjoy him setting up the cop and putting the bullets in. He's like, yeah, I'm, like they're gonna find out it's you. Yeah, maybe. All right. It's like, just, he just doesn't yeah. care. And what I, did I you think like about that. what did you think about the, uh, the 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 father, the cop, uh, that whole thing, the whole thing with the I, the, the, the the daughter, the co the same thing like they did in the first one with the the love interest, which is the doctor. What what did you think about that whole thing? I hated the whole like I didn't understand like any of it. I thought that it just didn't make any sense. Like, first of all, they're lifelong Florida residents, but they clearly have the heaviest Portuguese accents. And 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 you know what? <laughs> I making like I'm fine with them being Portuguese, but they can't be lifelong Florida resident. At least she can't have the accent if he's gonna have the accent. Like she's lived in eh, Florida all yeah. her life. Somehow she's kept that super heavy accent. I just I don't buy it. And like he's dirty, but he's not dirty. Uh, or I'm gonna. My daughter's been kidnapped, and then his daughter's actually kidnapped, and he still doesn't really seem to really care. But then at the end, all of a sudden, he comes in, and goes, "Listen, Dalton, I got all this cleaned up. Why don't you just get out of here?" Like, where is this coming from? No, yeah. how are you cleaning this up? You're you're dirty, and your 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 source of pay is gone. I, I just I don't get any of that. I think the doc was kind of shoehorned in. I would actually have rather had. Dalton and um, I can't remember her character's name. 
the owner of the roadhouse just kind of get together like uh, I, I don't need frankie i don't need like a shoehorned doc back in here that you don't really need her i i, I don't think i think she was kind of superfluous because if they kidnap frankie the owner of the roadhouse and all of a sudden she's dead then dalton still gotta go save her it makes more sense to capture her than some girl mm -hmm. he's been on one date with it just doesn't make a lot of sense plot wise for me i would make it a uh, much more like insular like kind of like oh this part of the plot if Frankie was both the owner of the roadhouse and someone Dalton was with. I think we're also seeing probably a lot of uh, subplot threads that are from previous versions that didn't make that just, they kind of kept in there. Like, oh, I, I wonder I, how I many think, versions of roadhouse remake scripts are there. Uh, I'm, I'm, I mean, I know, cause I know this was just originally started as a movie for, with, with Ronda Rousey in the lead and she, she, she dropped right. out of the, you know, so this was, this is, this was in the works for a while. Um, so I'm wondering if a lot of this stuff was just kind of kept in there. Like, again with the third act stuff um the complication of having the sheriffs be be a i, I mean you can have the dirty sheriff but the fact that he's the father of the love interest very um, convenient the, <laughs> right uh ellie um you know it's it, it just doesn't make any sense and he's just so it he's <laughs> Again, we have a. They're so dirty and they don't care. They're gonna just. Sh they're just gonna just shoot yeah, him in the boatyard. Yeah. Yeah. But how does I, she know I, that? So, they the boatyard anyway. Is that where he kills all of his uh, people? I don't. Yeah. So that that all that stuff is just uh, the, the Billy Madison character. The the um, you know his his whole Brandt. uh, Ben Brant's character. His oh. whole thing is just I don't understand. So there's a lot of stuff I just don't. There's. I think we're missing stuff that's just not in there. I think it's it, the movie starts off great i think it's got a lot of great it's got a lot of good action it's got a lot of good fight scenes it's got a lot of good just kind of moments but then when you start peeling when you start okay it's got oh that looks great that looks great when you start kind of digging into the story it there is it's just all over the place and it's really tough to kind of maintain um and that's why i say when i say third act problems they're really more second act issues because nothing is set up for the third act yeah fun fact and i know again People watching this are gonna be like, rah, 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 rah. the original Roadhouse has the same freaking problems. The original Roadhouse has the same story problems, but everyone ignores it because it's a cult classic. And while it does have some other better moments, like it needs that Sam Elliott character and stuff, I feel like this is just as bad as Roadhouse, but in a different time. So where Roadhouse came out in 1989, we're 30-something, 30 35 years away from that. The audience doesn't accept some of the things that were okay in Roadhouse's time, but are no longer okay here. But maybe that's purposeful to try to be more like Roadhouse, the original, be more like an '80s movie. Mike disagrees. I I do think this movie sucks, but they I agree. think Roadhouse. Do you, I think, do you think it sucks with that many use though? Do you think I it don't. sucks with that many use? Because would he say that <laughs> <laughs> that? The original Roadhouse also sucks with that many use because it does. If you're coming at Ooh. it not having grown up with it, and I love 80s movies, Roadhouse but, also sucks, but it's also enjoyable. Roadhouse, uh, I, just I will say 1989's Roadhouse is far is more enjoyable than this, but it's not like by a ton. I mean, uh, okay. I mean, we laugh at, I mean, first of all, I think it's really cute with John and Lloyd. They get their arms around each other. That's nice. That's sweet. <laughs> Um, I I mean, like we don't get the hokey dialogue of like ah, I brought a JC Penny, um, you know, it, uh, uh, to this town. You know, like we didn't get like a lot of those hokey lines. I think any you of those types hokey, of lines you that get some hokey lines from like the nice guy biker guy. Oh and, yeah, uh, his, it, yeah. Knox obviously has a lot of cheap lines, and then it seems like it's completely eighty yard, but uh, like. McGregor, like Knox and Dalton have lines to each other while they're fighting that just sound like shoehorned in. Oh man, his last like, line the piano too, sounds remember. a little out of tune. Oh, I hated that line. I hated that. Like, I hated that. Like, I know that Dalton's tough. I know he's tough, but he's taking full blown shots to his head, like from a massive individual, and he's just like <laughs> n n nothing phases him. And I'm like, I'm sorry, but like, I'd be. I don't know how you're doing that. Like, I. I, I hated that line at the end of the movie. I couldn't stand that line. Now, I don't know if this bothers you, but it always bothers me whenever yes. you get a movie like Rocky or Jake Gyllenhaal Southpaw, which is another good Gyllenhaal movie, or you get like 
I think I just said Rocky. A- any movie or like this, <laughs> any movie, any movie with a did you fight. Get hit in the back of the head, and your short term memory did. all messed I up. Did. T- which, it's all messed like, up. Like, like go, I don't want to cut you. I'm going to go back to that, but go ahead. Yeah. Any of these movies with fighters. Creed. Why does? Why does? Yeah. No one has cauliflowered ears. I'm sorry. I know you want to make your 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 main guy get like a pretty boy, but you got to give him this some. Is Hollywood, dude. This is, this is like fighters. It always <laughs> bothers me. But then you have fighters playing against them, and they all have cauliflower ears. It's like, why does McGregor's character Because of the bad guys. The bad guys have to look ugly. Actually, I just, this that, is Hollywood that, 101. That always, kind of, that always kind of bothered me. Like, the face is what so you, counts. Just give them a little bit so of stuff. You, so you want some ugly mug to, to be the lead no, in, I, in this I want, kind of a movie? <laughs> I want them Mangled to at least show. Nose, like... I, just like a little bit of cauliflowering around the roof. I just want to see that they're a fighter. Like it just I just hey, don't buy that they're fighters. Hey Jake, like, we want you we want you to get ripped for this film. Oh, I can't wait, Doug. Hey, wait, but listen, you're gonna look, we're gonna gross you up a little. We're gonna give you nasty ears. A little bit of we don't care what your public says. It doesn't mean a bet nose or anything, just a little bit. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense for him to have like, oh, he pulls up his shirt and he's all scarred. He's a UFC fighter, he's not a knife fighter, he's not like a ninja. It's not the Wolverine where he pulls like it's it just doesn't make sense to me that that's that's where'd you get those scars UFC how how no that, he's that's getting that's shanked like, goes, in every bar fight he's he's going into that goes back to that goes back to what we talked about uh, with the whole expo dump thing I think yeah. that goes right along those lines never mind that like he gets stabbed in the gut that and he's just like oh you want your oh, knife back uh, I got uh, like uh, I'm sorry but like you don't have a visceral like you. You, I know you don't want to get mad until you murder somebody, but like you can get a little annoyed that you just got stabbed in the gut. You could like punch the guy in the face or something. I was so sure the guy had stabbed him in the money that I was like, okay, that's why he's not being affected in the money. <laughs> well, because he's got a hoodie on, so I thought he stabbed him in the money right. in his pocket, and I was like, okay, that's why he's not being affected. And then he's like, nope, maybe uh, uh, as soon as I pull this out, there's gonna be a lot of blood. Uh, one of the other subplots I didn't like, which could probably go along to the lines of the pints this movie sucks, is that um uh the whole girl at the bookshop and the father uh oh, yeah. like w- why like why I I don't soon as she starts soon as she starts talking about the tree at the beginning of the movie I'm just like no no I don't I don't care about this <laughs> I don't care about any of this. Like this makes no sense, and like at the, I just, uh, like I don't get that part. It's to give him. They probably read the script and were like, "Listen, he can't care about the doc. He needs somebody else to go back for. He's not going back <sighs> for the doc," which makes sense because he's not. But that's why you have him fall for Frankie, and actually, that whole place has meaning to him. Yeah, I mean, I get it. It's it's a forced love interest, and it's really not a love interest. It's one day they don't do the whole thing it did in the original Ross, which is prevalent in the 80s and 90s which was the love interest and then they meet and then they hook up and right. they're not going to do that here because we don't do that in modern cinema these days i get i get that it doesn't make any sense but there's really no mo- um, to me if you're not going to do that which is fine you need to have more of an emotional connection with the doc and as uh, to your point there's no way to do that unless you make the movie longer so so instead so instead what instead of having instead of doing the bogus love interest which nobody likes we're going to do the bogus. I like kids stuff like that. You're just replacing one for the other. Absolutely. And it doesn't well, no, like, and, yeah. And it doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. And I just, I just don't like, I don't get it. Like, the, like, again, it's like, that's like a completely different movie. Like that, that whole, like is, is like, and I didn't like the whole Western thing that she kept talking about. Like, Oh, you're kind of like this Western. Just stop. Yeah. Uh, no, don't. It, the movie can be that. You don't have to reference it. The movie can be that without having a precocious kid in there, having to like have the oh look at the things she says. Nobody care. I don't care. I don't care about that. <laughs> that, that. That whole thing. I didn't care. The whole they burn it down and it was like, where are they? Oh, they're in the hospital. Doesn't visit them. We don't see him visit yeah, them. We don't know, we, how, you know if they're okay. If they're not okay. Yeah. Like I was waiting yeah. for him to go visit the hospital bed and find out like she's in really bad condition. And that's what like pushes them over the edge. Right, he's like two guys. Sir, you, that down. Need to, you need to get out of there, sir. <laughs> sir, <laughs> two guys all, burned. Who let him in there? Down. I know, but only one gets. Only one pays the price for it. It's uh, almost like that he could. He stacks like eight bodies in that pickup truck, bro. No, he doesn't. There's only yeah. one. I thought it's bodies no. in that pickup truck. It's just no. the one guy. He picked. No, he's got the one guy, and then he goes to get the ice and puts the puts the guy well, in ice. The ice for, for that one guy. 
for some uh, uh, for some reason where I don't understand how he knows there's money being hidden on an island. I don't get that. Um, so I don't. Yeah, right, yeah, John. Yeah, they yeah, just yeah, say way to back meeting. me up. Way guy. to back me up, John. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I know I was right. Uh, I, you know, so he puts him on ice so he can he can do the whole short term memory nonsense that doesn't work, which is dumb. Uh, like that was part of his plan right. all all along. And then and then he steals a box of money, which I don't get where we found that from unless I missed it. I mean, I was paying attention in this movie. All he says so, is there's a meeting at 5 a.m. Exactly. And then and uh, then that me. translates to well, I, I think found maybe. A kid money. Maybe the meeting was at that one where that one boat was, and they were going to take that boat out to the meeting place. But yeah. who knows? Who knows? No, nobody knows. And then we have the Jack Reacher ending where he goes on the he goes on to he goes he's on the uh, right the bus <laughs> like he's going to go to another roadhouse. Like I travel the I travel I, the country and I I, I hate become that. a bartender. The whole point should have been like he finds a home where he doesn't feel like he wants to kill himself anymore. And instead, it's like, oh, nope, let me leave it. And then I'm just going to travel, be depressed again. Yeah. It just doesn't make any sense. Yeah, no, we agreed, John. We, we were talking about third act, second act problems. It, it falls apart a lot further before that, too. It's just, just a lot of stuff that just kind of doesn't it. It's not. I'm talking myself out of this movie. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoy the fight scenes, even though the fight scenes are like hypersensitive. That I read that they did a multi multi pass technique, which is just basically overlaying the images onto each other. But I, I think they also did a lot of quick cuts too, like when yeah. he punches and then the cut. To, they did a lot of that stuff, like cut within, the, cut within the scene. It, there's some stuff that's really good, and then there's some stuff like the beginning of the final fight with Knox in the bar um, after the boat crash. Yeah, is all you can see the stunt doubles, which are all right. If you want to, that's fine. Which, nowadays, you should be able to hide it a little better. But also, they do like blurry cuts, or you can't see because there's obstacles in front of where you're trying to see. It does a lot of weird cinematography that I don't like because it looks like they're actually swinging punches, but the way the the camera is just doesn't focus. And then, mm -hmm. like maybe thirty. 40 seconds into that fight, then it cleans up and they never go back to those weird images again. It's like the editor started with it and then Doug Lyman was like, oh, that's crap. But, you know, we already have it. So keep that 40 seconds in. Just don't do it for the rest of the of the fight. Let's go. Let's go just steady cam and then the uh, the quick cuts and stuff. Yeah. And like the the the, the Frankie character, which I wanted to bring up Jessica Williams, because I'm going to again pitch you to go watch Shrinking because she's in Shrinking with Harrison Ford. And um, I'm blanking on his name. Jason yeah, Siegel. your mother, Jason Siegel. Uh, she's very good in that show, and she she's and she's is good in here. But there's a part in here where like she leaves the like it's almost like okay when she leaves the roadhouse. So and then Knox goes in and has the big fight that you were talking about, the fight that they had. Right. She leaves the roadhouse to go yell at Brant. It's like <laughs> it's almost like in it's almost like in the script. It was like, OK, so uh, Frankie leaves. Why? Well, we have to get you out of there. Why? Uh, we just don't want you there during the fight. Like you I just, thought the we, exact we to, same thing. We need you to she be, never we need back you to be like, hysterical in the in the parking lot for some unknown reason. Like you you grew up with Brent, but we're not telling anybody you grew up with. Brent. Uh, it's stupid, stuff like, like that. Where, where is she during the fight? <laughs> Brant drives off. What does she do? Grab onto the door and like let the mm -hmm. let the car go. Like mm -hmm. she should be like seeing dumb. the fights all happening. It's dumb. It's stupid. And then, uh, and, and, like, like the parking lot is like you know, hundred yards away, and she can't get right. back in time to realize that her entire bar is getting just like that's the other thing. I, John doesn't like the fights. Um, that's the other thing. Um, like when they're fighting, when the bar fight starts, when one dude's like bar fight, what what are we? And then we're on the canoes. Oh and yeah, then we're, like, I have that. And then we're climbing the Clint. I have notes like here. Is the bar fights work like that? Is it like a food fight? You just <laughs> declare it. And then you can literally just punch the guy next to you and then they start fighting. Some people are fighting the people yeah. they were sitting with, which doesn't make yeah. any sense. So, yeah, I, 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 what is I this place that. called again? Coral keys or crystal keys or glass, something? Glass key. Glass key. Maybe, maybe glass key is just a pit. Maybe people, maybe it's just people that live there shouldn't be living there. Like, may, like, like maybe it's just, it's just a bunch of like no good. Like, that's what it makes it out to be. Like, it's just a town of just, they just, you know. I mean, I always thought the just keys no were good like mostly rich people, but <laughs> and vacation spots. But I guess I was wrong. John, you're calling out a Razzie already? I mean, it's 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 March. <laughs> <laughs> I actually here's I think here's, he was all right. Yeah, here's my thing with Conor McGregor in the first the first maybe like 15 minutes of his performance. I'm like, is 
are they ADRing him? Like, is this somebody else's voice? Because this doesn't sound like him. And maybe I just don't hear him enough. Or maybe he was trying to not be as thick with his with his accent. It's still in there. Uh, I just it didn't sound like him to me. Did you did you, like what I mean? You, he's saying everything uh, behind this weird, like just like yeah smile but, so he's yeah. always everything he's saying is gonna have like this weird smile voice to it because he listen he's got a smiling. he's got a career in just being like a baddie like go ahead go be a james bond oh, villain or something yeah yeah like, i could see him going like obviously he has to tone it back from this or just do more over the like be being fast and the furious is the next fast and furious bad guy because that's kind oh, of what God. he is i'm tired when of he those, popped man. up in italy there's one more left you're, you're almost done till the spin maybe he will be family like that like him appearing in Italy reminded me him being in him in Italy reminded me of when we were introduced to Jason Siegel's character in Fast and Furious when he just goes to the hospital and finds uh his brother in the hospital bed and they just kills everyone in the hospital for no reason like I'm like okay so Conor McGregor is a is a Fast and Furious villain in this like I'm waiting That's for uh, Dalton to join uh Vin and his uh Vin and Luden crew. Well, no, he would. He would. You haven't seen the last one. You haven't seen the last one where Jason Momoa is the bad guy. Where he's dancing. He's running around. Going, Yee! Yeah, he, he told me about it. Painting fingernails yeah. on dead bodies. <laughs> I don't. Whatever. It's just dumb. It's just dumb. It's just again choices for unknown reasons. We're making these character choices because we think they're funny. Listen, I, I'm not defending the movie. I'm defending it from people who would also say that Roadhouse is a superior movie to like the nth degree. I'm saying they're both bad movies. But they are enjoyable in how bad they are. It's not like I didn't have fun watching the badness. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, to be fair, Mrs. Butler, we don't think that this is a good script as well. It, we think <laughs> it's, a, it's supposed to be fighting, and and that's it. But you know, I, I don't yeah. think we were expecting a lot of. We weren't expecting, you know, Oscar m m material here. I got essentially what I was expecting. Maybe, yeah. but I, I think it does you like it here. No, I mean I enjoyed watching it, but no, it's I don't I didn't like it. I, yeah. I I don't think it was a great movie. I think Roadhouse in and of itself isn't a great movie, and I think that's why people like it because it's quintessentially 80s cheese and that it needs to stay there. That's not something that it's really it was always like we talk about with trying to remake Ghostbusters exactly how Ghostbusters is. It's always gonna be mm -hmm. you're always gonna fall flat from remaking something like that because it is a movie all its own it can't be redone so in the main show starting may 1st uh we talk about we always ask you know is this something you would recommend or who would you recommend this to so I, i'd like to ask that here since we're critical of this film like is this something you would kind of recommend to anybody okay um, go check out roadhouse would would you if somebody's like oh, i'm really bored i'll be like listen you're gonna watch it you're not going to like you're going to watch the train wreck. It's not on. It's not an unwatchable film. We've watched unwatchable films before. It's not a film where you're like, oh, uh, just afterward. You're like, I don't. I love everything we watch, Butler. <laughs> I enjoy everything we watch. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's quick. If you're looking for like a, a shut your brain off movie, this is definitely one of those. It's quick. It's two hours, two hours. And I, mean, I mean, like I mean. it. It doesn't feel like long. I mean, yeah. you'd be hard pressed to find too many movies outside of like horror movies now that are under, you know, 120 minutes. It's just you're not going to find those. No one knows how to cut a movie anymore. Right. Can you hear my dogs barking? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, I can't I can't help that. I have dogs, people. OK, I, it's, this is live. They're barking because my wife's getting home from her big nerd fest where she was out today. Okay. So. <laughs> She read this book, this book that's like about dragons or something, and she had a, her friends all read them. I don't know, and it's a big they had a big nerd fest today tonight. So she's been doing that. So I can't stop the dogs from barking. They'll stop. <laughs> that's that. that and the, what's funny is the loudest is the smallest, and he's a pan in the butt. All right, so I, I I agree with you. I think I think there's better movies to watch. I think if you're looking for an action film, even though the pint John thinks the action is lame, there is action in there. Um, you know, so I. I, I I think there's probably better things out there uh, that you probably can do on a Saturday night. Um, but yeah, so, I mean, I don't, I mean, I, I don't, I don't, I'm purposely, I'm wrapping up because I don't think these should our forgotten cinema. They're now showing shouldn't be long. No, <laughs> so, <I agree>. um, <laughs> before we go, before we go, I know I kind of, I, I know I kind of like pumped the, the, the Patreon stuff. 
But if you want to kind of do that again, or you want to talk about the main show, or you want to talk about some of the episodes that we got coming up in the, on season seventeen, you know, have at it, Butler. <sighs> all right, hold on. All right, Take right. a breath. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let me try one of my new banners. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Boom. Yeah, that's right. Uh, <laughs> and I got this one. Don't forget to like and subscribe. So don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Uh, I think the only people that are watching this right now, live anyway, uh, already do. <laughs> but if you're watching this after yeah. the podcast, we would love if you liked and subscribed. That'd be great. Uh, check us out on Forgotten Cinema Patreon, patreon.com slash Forgotten Cinema. You can find these live streams are eventually going to become Patreon only. Um, we haven't decided exactly when yet, but we figured our first few as we're getting everything going should be for everybody so that we can get more people to be interested in us. Um, but we have our lead up series, our afterlife episode just dropped, um, yesterday or no today, yesterday, late, late yesterday, technically today. Uh, and we have another now showing, which is going to be on Tuesday where we're going to talk about frozen empire. We're going to live stream that Tuesday night, nine 30. Uh, and then the next day that's going to be available, um, for everybody as well. So check all that up. Like Field said, we're going to do the Aliens movies later on the summer. We've got Planet of the Apes coming up for lead up. So we have a ton of Patreon content. And May 1st, we're coming back for our main show, the podcast, the commercials, everything. We're we're back. All this, all this, this is for a, this is for a commercial. So hopefully that'll be gone soon. Um, you know, I'm suffering for my art here. So uh, check us out. Subscribe. Tell everybody uh, you know. Art. That good stuff. <laughs> I don't know if I say art, uh, but yeah. <laughs> All right. So, um, yeah, that's it. Thanks. Hey, John, we're going to go. We're going Monday night. If you want to come with, if you want to see Frozen Empire and IMAX, just uh, hit me up. We'll, we'll, we'll take that. <laughs> we'll, I'm more, more than willing to have you come with us, man. Um, all right. So everyone, thanks for joining us for the live. Thanks for watching. If you're watching this recorded, we hope you enjoy it. We hope you like some of the clips that come out. Um, Mike and I are pretty pleased with what's happening in terms of our um, Mike and I are pretty pleased what's happening in terms of our social stuff. Like we're kind of getting a lot of uh, uh, traction there. Your mother wants to get a haircut, Mike. So we've got that going. Everybody um, wants to. So I love how you got to go to the salon, you fancy boy. All right. So I we go to, will see I go to you. sports clips. <laughs> oh, there you go. All right. So we'll see everyone later. Um, thanks for watching. I'm Mike Field. I'm Mike Butler. And this has been Forgotten Cinema now showing Roadhouse. Well, the 2024 one. You want to call it Roadhouse Prime since it's not an answer? <laughs> no, I don't want to call it Prime. Yeah, like Optimus I don't Prime. know. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs>